We've all been there. You go to the store with a carefully planned list in hand, but before you know it, you're walking out with bags of items you didn't intend to buy. Those veggies on sale just looked too nice to pass up. And how could you resist when chips were half off? Before you swiped your card, you paused. Wait, wasn't I just here for milk and eggs? It seems so easy to get sidetracked from our shopping lists. Researchers estimate half of consumer spending is unplanned. Sometimes it's stuff we forgot to list. But psychologists have observed another type of purchase, the impulse buy. Those spontaneous items we chuck in our cart without forethought. So what makes these impulse buys so enticing we stray from our list? And how do retailers like IKEA slyly encourage this erratic spending? Today, we're unpacking the psychology behind unplanned purchases and what tricks stores use to get even the most organized shopper to splurge on extras. When you visit an IKEA, you can't help but notice it feels drastically different from the average store. Beyond their iconic meatballs, what makes this retail giant's approach so effective at getting us to spend more? I have just the right answer for you. Layout. Traditional store layouts versus IKEA's approach. Most retail stores are organized on an open floor in a few traditional layouts like the spine, grid, and racetrack. They're designed to let the customer roam around freely. But in stores like these, customers typically are only exposed to around 33% of products. Not IKEA. They flip the script with their signature confusing one-way maze. It starts at the entrance, where an escalator ushers you into a one-way maze that winds through the store. Customers are forced to walk in one direction and take in the scenery. This total product immersion is no accident, as this exposes them to the entire IKEA catalog. Every once in a while, the maze takes a sharp left turn adding an element of suspense and curiosity that makes customers want to keep exploring. This is an example of the Gruen effect, an idea developed by the architect Victor Gruen. Essentially, that's when a store's layout is so bewildering that it causes you to forget why you even came there in the first place. When customers are in that state, they end up making unplanned purchases, which helps explain why 6 out of every 10 IKEA purchases are impulse buys. Throughout the maze, IKEA utilizes realistic room scenes to further draw us in. Their displays provide a feeling of familiarity that increases our desires, basically tricking our brains into thinking, I need this for my home. These purchases are easier to swallow because IKEA keeps its prices consistently low, adjusted for inflation. Despite decades of inflation, prices on iconic IKEA pieces like the Polong chair have steadily decreased since the 1980s. This affordability stems from a savvy strategy known as flat packing. By dismantling furniture into tiny parts, minimal space is needed for storage and shipping. This saves the company millions of dollars in manufacturing, logistics, and fulfillment costs, which in turn translates to lower prices on the tag. That's why IKEA furniture comes in those tiny pieces that you have to assemble yourself, doing virtually all of the work that traditional furniture retails do for you. As it turns out, though, we actually don't mind doing this work. In 2011, researchers at Harvard Business School called this the IKEA effect. Let's say we are offered two identical products, one of them pre-made and the other one hand-built through your own labor. 
it turns out that we're willing to pay up to five times more in order to keep that precious DIY project. That means that we actually place more value on products that we build ourselves, even though that whole disassembled vibe is what makes IKEA stuff less expensive to begin with. And then there's IKEA's famous meatball aromas wafting through the store. Following your nose to the in-store cafeteria isn't accidental. Food is strategically placed to extend shopping time. Research has shown the potency of scents in influencing behavior. A study of shoppers in an Italian IKEA found that customers who bought food spent more money on furniture. In fact, they spent two times more than non-food buyers. Pleasant smells can improve mood and make people more receptive. Additionally, taking a break to eat means remaining in the store longer where displays continue triggering purchases. Every IKEA features a fast food bistro and a Swedish food market. In total, they sell 1 billion of their famous meatballs every year. In case you're wondering, if you rolled all those up into one giant meatball, it would be 83 feet tall. Former IKEA food operations leaders have acknowledged this, describing meatballs as sofa sellers, since eating encourages further contemplation of home goods without leaving. In today's digitally connected world, Customers leave massive digital fingerprints that provide unparalleled insights. IKEA gathers an immense trove of data on customers through their website, app, social media, and loyalty programs. Every online search, video watched, or product reviewed contributes valuable clues into shopping habits, pain points, and preferences. Meanwhile, sensors embedded throughout stores track traffic flow dwell times at displays, and which products capture attention the most. Even which showroom configurations drive greater sales are decoded. By combining these digital and physical insights, IKEA gains an unprecedented understanding of the shopper's journey. They identify slow-moving areas or overwhelmed sections in need of streamlining. IKEA analyzes which products are most popular online, if they see many more people searching for and viewing pages about ottomans compared to end tables, it indicates ottomans have stronger customer interest. So in stores, IKEA may give ottomans a larger display space to showcase these better selling items more prominently to shoppers. The goal is to highlight products online audiences engage with the most in order to match digital interests with prominent in-store placement and further boost sales. Data helps IKEA connect online browsing habits to smarter retail floor planning. A-B testing lets IKEA try minor changes, like rearranging a display, and then precisely measure the impact on key metrics. They relentlessly optimize based on hard data analysis. Was purchase conversion higher and time spent lengthened? These are questions that IKEA gathers data for, and through constant experimentation, every element in the IKEA ecosystem gets incrementally refined. From packaging to product placement, they ensure the overall experience keeps subconsciously guiding visitors down the path to maximum spend. Customers may not even notice the nudges, but their wallets surely do. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.